watercolor paint, oil paint, pastel, gouache, acrylic paint, ink, fine liners, pencils, brush pens, markers, and so on. Do I really need all this stuff or is there an easy way to create art without the need of all this? While well, using all of these art supplies is lots of fun and you can create beautiful artworks with them, there is a different and perhaps easier way to do that. My name is Benjamin Alkema and I'm an art teacher, illustrator and artist from the Netherlands. And today in this video, I'm going to show you Rebel. Rebel is award-winning, hyper-realistic painting software. It mimics the way brushes and pens and ink and paint works and interacts with a canvas and allows you to mix it, blend it and paint almost in a real way, but not using a brush or a canvas, but using a computer. I've been using Rebel for quite some years already and I've never done a review on it. So this review is long overdue. And in this video, I just wanna take you through Rebel and show you what it is all about. All right, then you don't wanna look at me, but we're gonna look at Rebel itself. When you start up Rebel, you are greeted with this window. In this window, you can choose the paper you want. You can change, choose the canvas you like. And there's some paper supplied with Rebel and you can buy extra papers if, it, if you need a specific paper, but there's a nice selection. You can choose some canvases, some watercolor papers, some specialty papers. You choose whatever color you like your paper to be, and then you're ready to start. Now I've prepared it already. So we're gonna start right away with mine. And here is the canvas I prepared. Now this looks just like a canvas. And this looks like if you would set up your desk. And here you have your brushes. There's some acrylic oil brushes, some expression oil brushes, watercolor brushes, pens and everything is there. Then once you have selected whatever brush you want, I've picked the watercolor brush, you can choose from round brushes, flat brushes, fan brushes, grunge brushes, gouache brushes, all kinds of water related brushes are in here. Great splatters which splatter onto your paint and are really dynamic. So every time you splatter, you get something else. You never get the same repeat thing. Well, let's demonstrate it then huh? while I'm talking about it. Let's pick some splatters. And there's some splatters, see, and these are all very different. I might pick a slightly darker color. And every time, I press, I get something different. Now, everything you can control, I can control the size of these splatters. So really large splatters. I can go really small splatters. I can control the opacity, really strong splatters, or as we've seen, really faint splatters. I can add a lot of water. So now they're gonna run a lot probably. And that's what's happening now in the background. If you keep on, looking you will see this change and i can so i can change that so i've loaded it up with a lot of water you can almost go dry brushing with it then it won't interact with what's happening on the canvas so you have a lot of options here on down here you can see the view you can rotate your canvas if you need to rotate it if you have a tablet you can move it around but this is a large uh, tablet so i'm not going to move that all around so i move my canvas instead you can zoom in and then you can see really the paper all these splashes of course you can zoom out again and these options you do have you pick your colors you've seen me do it you have a color wheel or you have color sets there's some supplied you can make your own and down here you have the layers now layers are something you can not use in real life unless you're let's say do oil paint or acrylic and with acrylic you put down one layer then you wait until it's dry, put on another layer. Here you can do that too. But the nice thing is you can switch your layers on and off. And while we're on that, I want to show you the engine, of course. The engine is now doing all kinds of things. It is reacting. It is mimicking real life. But the best way to demonstrate that is to switch that off and to pause the engine. For now, I'm pausing the engine. The engine is not doing anything. What I'm going to do is I've got this watercolor brush. And I'm picking a regular round brush. Let's see, a nice size. I want to have a nice, clear, darker color. So I'm going to those colors. Let's say I'm going to the blue. A bit of a dark blue color. Now I'm going to put down, before, I'm going to put down this stroke. 
and now nothing happens at all. It's just like a paint stroke that does nothing at all because I've paused the engine. But now I'm going to put the engine on in a second. But first I'm going to pretend I have my canvas upright. So if I have a canvas upright like that, then of course you can imagine what will happen. All the paint will be running down and I'm going to just pretend that. And now I'm going to put the engine on and you will see the paint running down. And once it reaches all the bottom, it starts running all over the all over the paper. I can switch the direction, go back paint. You can do crazy things with this, really. And now the paint will all flow up again because it reacts as if I tilted my canvas and it is still wet. As long as it is wet and not dry, it will react to whatever you do. The nice thing is, of course, I can pause it again and it won't do anything. And I can dry this. I can just hit a button here and say dry the whole layer. It dries my whole layer. So that natural fluid engine cannot react anymore because it, it is as if we had a hair dryer on it and stop this. This will work on the oil paints and acrylics too. It just interacts with each other. Now the cool thing is you can also control this. And what we're going to do is try to do that a little bit. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just put down some water. Pretend there's water running here, water running there. Oh, I have to pause the engine for a minute because it's going to interact now with this, of course. Because if I put water on my watercolor, it's going to do something. And the next thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to add that line again. And that is the cool thing. I can pause this. I'm starting the engine and now I'm going to blow the paint that way. And it should start running into wherever I put down that water and it will start flowing into the water and if I help it a hand like this let's help it a little bit so I'm not blowing if I blow that way so you can do all kinds of great cool effects and wherever you want the paint to go there it goes and whenever I want it to stop I want it to stop here and as you can see it just runs through here too and I'm going to say dry it again now it won't move even if I switch on the engine again nothing will happen and that is a little bit of a demonstration of the engine it is reacting with the brush with the paper whatever you do and that does doesn't only work for these watercolors that works for the acrylic too even the oil pastel a little bit the oil paint of course everything that is drying wet reacts with each other and you can blend and mix oh we have to do that of course all right blend and mix a little bit i'm gonna hide this I'm going to do that new layer here and let's pick just some acrylic, whatever, of oil. We've got an oil. Okay, now we'll pick an oil brush and I've got that dark color still. I'm putting it down. Is the engine running? Yeah, the engine is running. Whenever the engine is not running, you see the pause button. And when I pick a different color, let's pick a lighter color. That should now start interacting with that color. See? They're mixing and blending with each other. And there you go. Now I can even with this control the way the length of my strokes. So if I say I want short strokes, it will just stop. I need to put up the stroke again. And I have a lot of control with that. Oiliness. The more oily now I get a nice, I need a different brush for that. Let's pick one of these ones with a nice texture in it. There you go. The more oil you put in it, the more texture, the more it starts running, the more it starts blending. The opacity, you can also hear nice thick strokes with the oil, thinner strokes, faint strokes, shorter strokes, still faint. And of course, you could control the size really small. Oh, I have set a really short one. There you go. Or very, very thick ones like that. And if I pick again another color start blending these colors in and these are not the greatest colors and to blend see and it all reacts to each other so that engine that pretty much works quite natural and even it, it reacts to the paper if you pick a different kind of paper or set the paper to do something different you have all these options in rebel then it starts reacting differently to the paper now, you see a lot of brushes. The oil, here's some oil, flat brushes, but you also have some knives of oil as well. Mm 
Let me find the knives. <laughs> there they are. I ah, pick a knife. See, and that just starts as if I'm scraping with a knife, even tries to put in some of the texture. Here is a very textured knife and all kinds of effects. And that way, by using these, you can create beautiful paintings. And that is what I've got to show you now, of course, some of the paintings I've done with Rebel. So let's look at that. So I got to hide this layer and now I'm going to show you some, of course, what I've created. Now, first off, some watercolor. If you want to do some really traditional watercolor, there you go. Very traditional watercolor with all the blends, all the colors, all the effects you get with watercolor brushes. Very traditional. If you would want to do something fairly traditional, but stronger, even that you can do with paint. And I got to zoom in, of course, so you can see all these texture effects in it. That is all you can all create with here in the background too. You can create that all with just some simple brushes. And I want to get that on the center again. No tricks, no special brushes, all made with the standard brushes that come that mimic natural brushes. But of course, not only watercolor there is, you can do some ink too, some great inking work. And I got to zoom in again. And that is a nice thing. You can zoom in quite a lot and get all these strokes wherever you want them. Go as fine. And then you can move that canvas around and work on another part of your canvas. Do some different effects. It's all really there. And then, of course, I've shown a little bit from the oil. But here's an oil painting I did. A simple oil painting. You can see all the strokes. You can see the canvas still in, in it. And if you keep on adding layers, you work away that canvas eventually too. Just like with real oil paint. Something more complicated where most of the canvas is indeed gone, except for up there a little bit, perhaps. And there you go. Mix the colors, bring in light and shadows. All great. All these textures all done with brushes. Not special brushes, not texture effect brushes where you just get a musk brush and you start stamping. No, you really have to paint that all in still. You can do great things with Rebel. Now let's do some markers then. And I paint really quick today, am I not? Just a press on a button and I've got a new one. Markers, looks like alcohol markers with those nice bold colors, nice blends, nice, nice mixes, shadow, light. Pretty great. Let's see, where am I? Oh, I am here. There you go, some graphite. It has graphite brushes too, of course, just regular pencils. A whole set ranging from H to 8B, I think, and all kinds of in-between. And if you want to do a little bit more with the pencils, use them as colored pencils, some graphite with it. Interesting. You can do some interesting illustration with this. Then we talked about the acrylics already shown you a few strokes. Here's the acrylics just with the nice, bold, just obvious strokes. And let's zoom in a little bit. You can see all the texture effects still in it. And there you go, acrylics, soft pastel. I gotta center that a little bit. No, that is not centering. That is flipping the canvas. Some soft pastel. And even here you can still see all the texture work in it. And you can do some beautiful things with it. Well, those are the regular media. But what you can do also is mix them. Create mixed media art pieces with Rebel. And the cool thing is you can mix things which you would never want to mix in real life, which create a disaster. But you can do that in Rebel. So let's hide this soft pastel and go to the mixed media. Now, this is the obvious one, ink and watercolor. A lot of people do that. That is, of course, yeah, very obviously. And here is another one, a bit stronger watercolor effects in it. Ink and watercolor works great. But let's see, there's more. So let's take a look. Let's hide this one. And there you go. Now, this is a piece that has pastel in it, acrylics. And there's watercolor in here. Now, in real life, I don't think I would want to mix all of that together. But in Rebel, it works really good. There's some watercolor, some pastels on it. And then here, there's the nice strokes of the acrylic brushes. And just mix it up and blend it all together. And since you can work in layers nicely, that is not an issue to mix it all up. And there's another one I did. Watercolor, pencil in here. And definitely a lot of acryl too. 
some certain brush strokes and all mixed up together again, painted into one piece. So you can use Rebel to create some pretty nice artworks. Now, aside from these brushes and all these effects you can do, there's of course all kinds of tools that will help you to create art. So let's look at a few of these tools now. Now, most of the times as an artist, you just don't start painting away whatever you like. Also, sometimes, of course, we do, but often we want to use our reference images. And of course, in Rebel, you can do that. You can bring up a reference image and there you go. I've set up already one. You can load whatever reference image you want. So let's find a reference image on here. Let's pick this one and oh, there you go. And you can set up your reference image and that would be my reference image and I can make it as small, as large as I like and then start painting and drawing away. And the nice thing is that you can switch between reference images. So if I move this one away and I want a different image, I want to combine images, then I can just do the next reference image. I'm going to switch back to the other one. And as you can see, you can open as many reference images as you like, but I just want one. What I want to do is I want to put up some guides that will help me to draw this better. But first of all, I'm going to check how this is. This is a way too large image. So what I have to do is I got to scale this to fit my canvas pretty well. And you can do all of that, of course, in Rebel. Scale it so that it fits your canvas. Well, I think I'm fine with that. And there you go. And that is one thing you can do. You map your whole image onto your canvas, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hide it again. But what I want to do instead, I want to add some help lines. And for that, I'm going to use my mouse. Let's say I want to say the head needs to go there. See, and now you have that top line already. I want some helplines for the horns. You can move them around if you want to. And let's do the head there. The head there. And then let's do the top of his nose. And when I hide this one you will see all the references here that i put on my reference image and then you can start painting now if you need a grid that's all there and you can set up the grid just as you would like and go even a step further we can do some perspective tools there you go now it's set up in a certain way if i start drawing i'll pick a pen for it See, it will go towards whatever you set it up. And you could do one point, two points, or three points. And it just goes back to wherever you put this. And of course, obviously, you can move it around wherever you like. If I want my perspective to go towards that, there you go. See? And all these tools you have, there's rulers. And there's all kinds of help tools you have to create your art. Pretty cool, isn't it? A nice toolbox with all kinds of tools an artist needs to create beautiful paintings. Map your paintings onto the canvas, use help lines, use the reference, and just use perspective and grids, and all these things are there to help you paint your beautiful painting. Is there more? Oh, of course there's more. And as you can see, by the way, the engine is still running, see? I probably put it on tilt downwards, see? Even this, paint which i put down whatever paint that was it keeps on running all right good let's hide that let's stop this engine for now let's stop it running all right now there's other tools of course now let's paint something real quick and i need a layer for that there you go and see there's the texture and everything in it now i switched off the engine so it will not react anymore there you go you can edit things, you can edit shapes. Let's say I have this ball shape. 
I want this, this is in the wrong position. I can move it around. I can make it larger, smaller, any way I like. And I'm gonna say, okay. But I can also warp this. There's a feature called warp in it. And instead of, there you go. Then it moving around, I can change the shape however I like. And let us do its thing. It's got to calculate that. There you go. Okay, and now I've got a totally different shape. But there's also another new cool feature in Rebel 6. And that is liquefy. I can liquefy this. I can push this and press this around. So I can transform, move it around. But I can also push it, smudge it, move it around. Yeah, do some crazy things with it. So this is the smudge one, smudge, and I can pull it around, press it wherever I like. There you go. Rebel 6 has a new feature called liquefy, where it just pretends. <laughs> this is almost like playing with wax, something like that, clay. Like it is clay figures, you can push it, you can pull it. I can push it around and you have all kinds of features, twirl it I think, this might be the twist, alright, twist that stuff around, all kinds of cool things you can do and of course you can create some crazy art with this but also use it on your artworks when certain things you want to pull down like, uh, let me let me show you that, I'm going to erase this layer, go away you. So let's say I'm painting a tree, there you go, and I'm going to stop that engine and I'm going to go back to this and I'm saying, but my tree isn't like I want it. I'm going to pull these, this paint into the roots, for example. You could use it like that, even create some structure with it. Now, there is a useful use of this. Instead of me painting afterwards, I could change and create some great effects. All right, now, of course, one thing which you can't do in real life is you can erase stuff that is really cool and now that is gone. Really nice. You can also blend. So then it blends away if you have a second color next to it. Um, I need a brush for that. Ah, there you go. And you take that blender. And I can blend these together afterwards. But it will not regard the texture. That's the disadvantage of blending like this. But if you need some blending, there you go. It works. You can clone, you can stamp, you can use stencils all kinds of more things you can do and I'm not gonna uh, demonstrate everything there is. And I can keep on playing with this for hours but I'm gonna try to stick to doing a review of it. So we're moving on. If you want to try Rebel yourself it's on the Escape Motion website where you can download the demo. It's the full software. I don't think you can save with it and things like that but you can get a good impression. Now Rebel 6 is the new version and I'm going to just show you some of the new features that one has. Now Rebel has two versions actually. There's a pro version and there's a regular version. So you have to check the website which things are in the regular and which are in the pro one. But let me show you a little bit of the features that are new. And for that I'm going to show you an image again. The first thing is oil pastels. Rebel has over 240 brush presets, brushes, different kind of effects with the brushes, different kind of brushes, and the whole new set they added and improved. First they added oil pastel and they improve, improved their trimedia, their pastels, really good. But oil pastel is there now too. Aside from new brushes, there's quite a number of new features and they added some filter effects, like some lens blur effect. As if you would take a photograph, focus on this main toadstool here and the rest just blurs away and the further you go the more you can blur. 
So that's one of the new filter effects. The other filter effect they added I've done here is Caution Blur. And I, you can use it for all kinds of effects. Blur some of your painting, but I've done it here with the shadow to blur that a little bit. And that's some of the new filter effects. Another thing they've added is now you can do your favorite brushes. You can you see a new category, favorite brushes. So if you have a new brush, you just go on it, click your mouse. I think it's the left mouse. I'm not sure. I'm using that on the pen. And anyway, click either left or right and say copy to favorites. And if I go now to my favorite, then that favorite brush is right there. And while on it, the brush engine, oh, sorry, the brush creation has changed too. They finally made it a bit more organized and you have a lot more options here. I think this is pretty much the way they design their own brushes. We can finally now do that. Control all the strokes the way you want it. Everything is there like spacing, jitter the opacity, the print pressure, the tilt, you can all control that. Then you have the images, you can have the shape and the grain that is in there. You can control the blending and set the brush to whatever blending you want it to have, even the angle and some extra options like grain smoothing and sp splatter offset and things like that to get a really interesting natural brush and you control the way it paints. Is it a normal blush? Is it glazing? How does it do its blending and things like that? Even in pesto and oil you could bring into your brush if you have the right settings. So that is improved, I would say, quite a lot. The other thing they finally added is masking and clipping mask. And only that, for me personally, that would be worth to get it. Well, the other improvements are great, but with the new oil pastels and all the improved brushes and added, and clipping mask that is worth already for me a purchase if you don't know what clipping mask is let me paint a little bit let's say i paint something i'm gonna go again ah, for a green tree we can't have a green tree can we but let's say this is there you go imagine this is the base of my tree or at least part of the trunk so i like my shape and i want to keep the shape but i want to add something on top of it but i want to make sure it follows everything i painted so what i can do for that is add a new layer click on it and now i have the new options to set it as a mask or a clipping mask i'm going to say clipping mask and now it regards everything so let's turn this into a bit of more of a proper tree so if i start painting now here as you can see and if i start painting now there actually whatever i'm painting is there but it will only show up wherever I'm putting it on this reference. Now we're getting better color in my tree for sure. See, I can do a proper tree. See, and now I don't have to worry that whatever I've painted around here, if I have painted there something already that it will influence that, it will only influence the part that I want it to influence. And there you go. Now that is a lot better, isn't it? Well, let's make sure up there and down there. A little bit of light. There you go. That's a lot better. So it regards the layer that is under it. And you can use a couple of them on top of each other if you want. So if you want certain effects layering on top of each other, you can add just more clipping mask layers, which is really cool. Great feature they added. Now, the, some of the things I've already shown, like the liquid tool, the warp tool, the new transformations, that's there. What is new in the pro version is fractal imaging processing, I think it's called. Yes, fractal imaging processing. And that makes sure whatever you transform, makes, especially when it goes larger, but also smaller, it makes sure it keeps that same quality that is there. There's a algorithm there that interprets how it would go in real life if you would stretch something so that you don't lose your quality i think that is really handy to have especially if you use the nano picture technology also so where you work let's say on an a4 just a small size and you can blow it up depending on your computer up to a 16 si 16 size without losing quality then this addition to it the fractal imaging processing is really a great addition to make sure you keep that quality and if you haven't seen that nanopixel stuff <laughs> let's call it nanopixel stuff what is it called nanopixel technology i really should demonstrate that huh? 
it's on by default by me but i'm going to switch it off now there you go it's off gone what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick a pen i'm going to show you this with the pen and fin pen and i gotta add so oh, i can't do that on that original layer let's add it like so there you go is that my pen yeah that's the pen if i zoom in now there you go this is what you get with regular and most most applications do that now with that nano pixel technology if i switch that on it's gonna smooth all of this out see making real lines of it as if they would be in real life and i can see how far i can zoom in this is the max zoom in if i switch it off again it's still working by the way because that that ink is flowing stop flowing ink switch it off now this is looking horrible you don't want to blow this up and print that on a huge canvas that will create a disaster but with the pixel nano pixel technology that works great and you even have a little bit of curl, the paint texture how much how strong you want that and your texture if you want that in it or if i want it totally gone how the quality of that so that is a great i think that is a pretty cool feature so to make sure the quality stays the best there is and i think pretty much the rest i covered already like the kites and things like that the reference images which was new so well that pretty much covers it and with that i'm gonna end my review of rebel 6. so there is two versions there's a regular version and there's a pro version so most of the features will be in both the regular version and the pro version but the pro obviously has some extras which makes it slightly more advanced some techniques that pros actually would really use in their workflow and especially when you want to print your artworks and print them large and sell them and things like that then the pro version really adds some additional things to it which uh, you can't do without when you start printing really want the high quality but if you only use it to print an a4 once in a while or a card something like that then the regular version is fine too i really enjoy this software actually it's the only software i do use on my computer to paint to draw because it has all the tools i need as a traditional artist i really like how i can dive right into rebel and just feel at home because all these brushes do what i expect them to do and these extra help things like the guides and perspectives just works also as i would expect it to work and all the features that you get on top of that to add digital power to traditional artwork that is just brilliant if you never used rebel before then there's a link below in the description it takes you to the escape motion website where you can just check out rebel a little bit more download the demo if you want to play with it see if it suits you as well as it does me and with that i'm going to end this review of rebel 6 and i'm going to enjoy some more painting and who knows i might post some of these paintings i do and show you here on my youtube channel what i create in rebel all right well thank you for being with me in this video and have an awesome day